Hi, welcome to the Janssen Report. This is Mark Horn. Today is December 29th, 2018. Before the year is over, I would like to share with you this major story, or what should be a major story, in my opinion, is the Cumex files. This was released late October, I think October 18th of this year, 2018, within Europe to the press, and it's a cross-border investigation on... Um, well, let's call it a swindle, a big fraud or scam, whatever you want to call it, of European banks, or not even European banks, actually, also many other international banks have been implicated in this tax swindle. So right now you're looking at the website of comexfiles.com. It's actually comex-files.com. I'll share the link below this video in the, in the, in the content. And it's an initiative by Corrective which is one of the 19 collaborating journalist platforms uh, which made up this cross-border investigation. Because this is a tax swindle with dividend tax that was, uh, let's say, robbed from European countries and thus from taxpayers all over Europe. In fact, let's see what it says here. The vast so-called Comex tax scandal, which has rocked Germany in the past decade, this is how long this has been going on, has already cost the country an estimated 30 billion euros. It was assumed that a change in the law in 2016 definitively outlawed such trades. But a cross-border and undercover investigation now reveals the trade is still flourishing and has targeted far more countries and has cost far more than was previously thought, affecting nearly all of the biggest economies in Europe. Is this the heist of the century? Well, if it isn't, then at least it is one of the biggest heists of the century. I think we can conclude that because 55 billion euros of tax money being defrauded is a vast sum, in my opinion. So, in order to be able to answer that question, is this the heist of the century? We'll come back to that at the end, but let's first have a look into what happened. And what it means, in fact. So the Comex files, let's have a look at the whole story. This is the trailer, in fact, by um, the Corrective itself. The organization that kind of led this whole investigation is, um, well, a short trailer on what they discovered. Well, you can watch the, the final 20 seconds on this website, of course. I, I mean, it's not my intent to show you all these videos on this platform. It's just to give you an idea of the, you know, the research that was done on the Comex files. I think it's very interesting. You can read more on the comexfiles.com and also on this corrective.org website that you see here. Read the whole story. It kind of reads like a thriller type of thing. It's, it's uh, done in a very interesting fashion. And uh, you can see, you can read more about the cooperation. 38 reporters involved, 19 newsrooms, 12 countries, and 180,000 pages of documents that they went through. So it's very interesting, a very thorough investigation that has received very little attention in the media here in Europe. Probably in the United States, it didn't get any coverage or hardly any coverage. And I wonder if there is any any of you out there that would like to share your experience with this or if you have heard of the Comics Files at all. So that would be interesting uh, to learn. Uh, please send me a message if you have heard of it. I would be very curious. So this is how they do that. Tell reception, we'll go and find them in five. This is the way they tell the story. So if you go to the website comicsfiles.com, you will find the story here. It's it, Again, it reads like a thriller, pretty much, and this is how they kind of set it up. But again, it's not my purpose to go through this 
uh, A to Z. It's just to give you an, an idea of what happened and what they, you know, how they came up with uh, this information. So what exactly is this scandal? Well, the Comics Files, as we can read here on Wikipedia, the Comics Files is a tax fraud scheme discovered in 2018 by, uh, sorry, 17, by collaboration between a number of European news media outlets. Well, we just saw the 19 platforms. A network of banks, stock traders, and top lawyers has obtained billions from the European treasuries through suspected fraud and speculation with dividend tax. The five hardest hit countries may have lost at least $62.9 billion worth. Germany is the hardest hit country with around $36.2 billion worth withdrawn from the German treasury. Estimated losses for other countries include at least 17 billion euros for France, etc., etc. Well, you can read it here on Wikipedia. Now, how did they do this? Well, it's briefly explained here, and of course you can read more on this on the Comex files, but the, participant in, the participants in the network would lend each other shares in large companies so that to tax authorities there would appear to be two owners of the shares when in reality there was only one. The bank that was used in stock trading would then issue a confirmation to the investor that tax on the dividend payment had been paid without it actually being done. And then, maybe this is you know, easier to understand, it's a bit like parents claiming a child benefit for two or more children when there is only one child in the family, writes Corrective. This practice was outlawed in 2012. Yet, as this research proves, in fact, it continued after that. So, Corrective, actually, if you want to read more on this cross-border uh, initiative and on Corrective itself and how they operate, I think it's very interesting. It's a very interesting way of doing investigative journalism. Corrective.org, I will also provide you a link below this video. And as I mentioned before, it received very little coverage in the mainstream media in Europe. And the question is always, how come? I always find it strange how the major crimes of these financial institutions are covered to a very little extent, very low extent. Why isn't it huge news covered on all the networks? Because this is much bigger than, than the smaller frauds by uh, individuals within society, right? With, like consumers or like individual people that uh, go about tax evasion and what have you. This gets a lot of coverage though. You know, um, uh, statistics on how um, people, let's say individuals, consumers, etc., the minor players in society, how they defraud the, um, uh, let's say, the taxes and the, the tax institutions in, in their countries. So it's more about, you know, presenting numbers and then also presenting, uh, let's say, measures taken against these people. So this big one, 55 billion euros worth of tax fraud is hardly covered. Of course, Le Monde covered it because it was part of the, of the investigation of the, the researching parties. And here's another one on Tagesschau that covered it. And my, um, actually my primary source in the Netherlands, follow the money that I'm, you know, which I'm a member of, they have also shared it to a large extent. This is another interesting part here. The German Justice Department is prosecuting a journalist, one of the journalists of the corrective organization, for publishing the Comex files. And um, actually, he's being suspected of, uh, of uh, revealing company secrets in, you know, because of these Comex files. So revealing company secrets in a uh, apparently uh, non-legal matter manner but that's what journalists should do right i would say if you do a good job as a journalist as an investigative journalist you come up with the truth you try to uncover the truth and even if it will you know if it means revealing company secrets if it's a fraud it's a fraud and you have to reveal it that's my opinion when it comes to journalism and it's, it's unfortunate that uh, the legal departments are now uh, prosecuting journalists. Just another example of how this has been uh, coming to light 
on 8th of January of 2016, there was a global tax alert sent out by Ernst Young. Germany investigates banks regarding Cum-X trades. Now, this was more like a, uh, a warning, it seems, for banks and for their clients. And um, because this, is, this really infers that banks should conduct an in-depth analysis of the tax and criminal law risks faced by the bank, its managers and employees due to Comex trades. So this is more like a way for Ernst Young to, uh, to help them out in their, uh, in, you know, in, let's say, mitigating their risks. But interestingly enough, this was released on, uh, in fact, 8th January 2016. I wanted to show you this coverage by the OCCRP, Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project, that I didn't hear of before. But the interesting part here is that this platform is also talking about investi investigative journalism to a cross-border level, or taking investigative journalism to a cross-border level, where the latest technologies would help reporters match both the creativity and almost unlimited resources of organized crime and corrupt leaders. So this is, uh, in my opinion, a kind of an interesting project, and I hope uh, they will be pursuing this, because it's very important to bring up all this, let's say, news and all these facts about organized crime, and in, to a major extent, this has been happening in banks, in, let's say, legal constructs, the, uh, like banks and, and the way they operate. Uh, actually, almost a legal con construct, but then, as it turns out, illegal um, uh, implementation of that. So, OCCRP actually covered this, this part, uh, and you may want to read that as well, but I'll, I'll not get into that right now. And then if we look at... That question that I posed before, is this the heist of the century? Well, maybe within Europe, but let's have a look at some other crimes that have been committed by global banks. So this is an article in um, International Business Times. On May 24th of 2015, 20 global banks have paid $235 billion in fines since the 2008 financial crisis. So this was... May 24th, 2015, only 20 global banks, 235 billion US dollars worth of fines, meaning that the crimes that they committed were probably way larger than these fines. Usually these fines that they have to pay are smaller than whatever profit they made out of it. A couple of years later, this came out on Fortune and many other outlets, actually. Also on Forbes and, uh, and, and Bloomberg. And this was a couple of years later, March 3rd, 2017. Banks across the world have paid about $321 billion in fines since the 2007-2008 financial crisis as regulators stepped up scrutiny, according to a note by the Boston Consulting Group. A note by the Boston Consulting Group. So, when it comes to the heist of the century, well, 55 billion euros worth of taxpayer money being robbed, if you want to look at it that way. On the other hand, you can, you can also say that uh, taxation is theft. <laughs> That's another point of view. So evading taxes or avoiding taxes or what have you would be a good thing. Well, we are still in this society and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we, we all have to pay our taxes uh, when we are part of this society. So... If we do, and if we are honest in that respect, we should also deal with these banks in the same way. And they should be prosecuted, and the, the ones are, who are accountable should be put in prison, right? Well, let's see if that's going to happen. Who knows? Um, moving forward, there should be some indictments come going out, because Germany, in fact, uh, Germany is actually prosecuting a number of these banks right now or is looking into how to prosecute them so uh, I would be very interested to see that some people will be going to jail for this but the question is will they will they go to jail will any go to anyone out of these banks go to jail for these crimes let's see and uh, well I'll uh, I'll keep you posted on the comex files and the developments in the next year on the Janssen report
Thanks for watching this program and talk to you later. Bye-bye.